Did the SECURE Act bring back the stretch IRA? We're going to dive into this. Don't forget to sign up for my Locals channel and the Doobie Duke down there and sign up for my email list as well. And the link to this article from Jeffrey Levine over at thekitsis.com post-op after action review will be in there as well for you to read and uh, and think about and come back to it time and time again. Because this so far is the best uh, read I've had on the SECURE Act. I, I would expect nothing less from the Kitsis folks because these guys crush. All right, so new post-death option for surviving spouse beneficiaries of retirement accounts. Under existing law, current law, when a surviving spouse inherits a retirement account from a deceased spouse, they have a variety of options. They can roll over the decedent's IRA to their own, or they can remain a beneficiary of the IRA. And I'm going to share with you what's important about that. So right now we got Josh. I'm I'm uh, uh, well, I'm uh, 52. I forgot my age. I was going to say 67. I don't know why. And we got Charlotte. She's 48. So if I die today, I'm dead. I got uh, myocarditis. If I die today, Charlotte would not want to roll over my IRA to her name. Why? Because she has access to this money as long as it's in my name, not hers, without the 10% penalty being under the age of 59 and a half. All right. So this, I, I cannot stress this enough. If the surviving spouse is under the age of 59 and a half, do not roll over IRAs. Keep them uh, as, inher- as uh, beneficiary IRAs, inherited IRAs. That way you have access to the cash without the 10% penalty. So you got to pay income tax. You just don't have to pay the penalty. All right. Let's fast forward a couple years. We'll say now she's 60 and I'm 64. All right. And then I die. I got uh, another myocarditis. All right, so I'm 64 and she's 60 and then I die. In this case, she in this in the old days, she would roll my IRA to hers. Absolutely. Because then her RMDs are based on her age. Nothing to do with me anymore. All right. And the fact that she's over 59 and a half, um, there's no uh, 10% penalty to worry about. All right. So in that case, that's that's great. So in that case, she should absolutely roll it over. So if she's under 59 and a half, keep it as is. Do not roll it over, over 59 and a half, roll it over. All right, so let's keep going. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but let's see. Uh, beginning of uh, 2024, the SECURE Act, Section 327, will extend a list of spouse beneficiary only options for further, further by introducing the ability for the surviving spouse to be treated as a deceased spouse. And this is freaking nuts. Nuts in a good way. RMDs for the surviving spouse will be delayed until the deceased spouse, which have reached the age which RMDs begin. All right, so RMDs under the new rules would be delayed until um, uh, until the RMD age for the deceased began. All right, so just going back to Charlotte and Josh. All right, so we got Josh. I'm just going to use the same thing because it's too much pain. All right, so I'm I'm uh, 73 and I die. Charlotte's 68 and, and basically elects to name herself as the deceased spouse. She still has to take RMDs in two years because I would be 75 by then. Even though I'm dead, I would have been 75. She would still have to take RMDs when she's 70 years old. I hope that makes sense. All right, so that's a problem, but there's a benefit here too. Once RMDs are necessary, the year the decedent, me, would have reached RMD age, 75, um, the surviving spouse will calculate her RMDs on the uniform life table, which is much, much better than a single lifetime table. So even though she'll start having to take RMDs well before she's of the RMD age, all right? So remember, if you're born in 1960 or later, your RMDs are when you hit 75. If you're born 1951 through 1959, your RMDs are when you hit 73. If you're born 1950 or earlier, your RMDs are as uh, same thing as they always been, 72. All right. All right. But anyway, the uniform lifetime table. So even though she is going to have to take RMDs based because I have hit the age of 75 as a dead man, um, it'll still be based on a uniform lifetime table, which is less than this, which she has to take less out than a single lifetime table. All right. Here's where it gets interesting. If the surviving spouse dies before RMDs begin, so this is Charlotte, right? I'm gonna, she dies before RMDs begin. 
All right, so let's draw this up again. Well, let me just read this. Um, her, her beneficiaries would be treated as though they were the original beneficiaries of the account, which would allow the eligible designated beneficiaries, human beings, to stretch distributions over their life expectancies instead of being stuck with a 10-year rule. So again, we're going to go Josh, and we're going to go Charlotte. All right. So I'm 73, and I die. Charlotte, get, she names herself, herself as me. She's saying, I am, the dece I am Josh, the deceased spouse. Then she, so when I hit 75, she would have to have taken RMDs because she, I hit 75. But then she dies at 69 before I hit 75, thus before I have to take RMDs. And again, because she's just declaring herself as me, she would have had to. She dies at 69. Then what happens is, because it's before RMDs, our kids... 25% a piece can inherit that money and take the RMDs according to their own life expectancies. And given that my kids are 20 or uh, 25 years younger and see Maddie's 25 years um, younger than Charlotte. Yeah. 25. Yeah. Charlotte's 25. Uh, and Liam is, um, I don't know, uh, 25 years. What Liam was, Born in 2007, I can't remember. Maybe Liam was uh, 33 years. Yeah, so we had four kids in eight years, I think, in seven years. Either way, Liam's 32 years younger than Charlotte, if that makes sense. So now they can stretch their own IRA distributions over their life expectancy, which is significantly lower than what Charlotte's was, which is based on my record anyway because of rules. Now, here's where it gets even interesting or more interesting. While regulations will be needed to further flesh out details of this, at first glance, it would appear that the primary case will be for surviving spouses who inherit retirement accounts from a younger spouse. I'll talk about that. By electing to treat themselves as a decedent, they will be able to delay RMDs longer. And once RMDs do start, uh, they'll be smaller because of this, the uh, uniform lifetime table. So here's an example. The king and queen of hearts. The king is 65. The queen is 70. So the king is younger than the queen. The king dies in a croquet match when he got hit in the head with an errant croquet ball. Under current law, the queen could roll over the king's IRA into her own, but doing so would have to require her to take RMDs in just a few short years when she hit, we'll just say 75 for simplicity. Alternatively, they, she could choose to remain a beneficiary of the king's IRA and would delay the RMDs until the king would have reached 75. All right. By contrast, effective in 2024, <clears throat> the queen can elect to be treated as if she were the king. Thus, RMDs will be delayed for another five years until the king was 75. And once they are necessary, would be based on the king's younger age and that's smaller than they were based on the king's age, or the uh, queen's age. But even better. So remember now, the queen, in this case, we're going to have the queen at 70 and the king at, six, at 65. All right, so queen, 70, king, 65. So the queen is saying, I am not naming myself. I'm just going to be, I'm, I mean, I'm naming myself as if I'm, I'm electing to call myself the deceased spouse. I'm electing to call myself the king and keep the account as is. Which means I don't have to start taking RMDs until the king would have been 75 and I would have been 80. All right. And when I do, it's based on the king's life expectancy, the RMD tables, with a uniform table, which is less... So just wonderful stuff here for required distributions. It's fantastic. But even better, if the queen dies, all right, let's say the queen dies at 78, the king would have been uh, 73. Guess what, my friends? No RMDs required, even though the queen is over 75 because the king is only 73. And the queen can name the princes and princesses as, as uh, beneficiaries, <clears throat> and they could stretch that money over the course of their lifetimes. 
huge, huge opportunity here. I, see, I think he has one final comment. It's worth noting that the Secure 2.0 Act states that when a surviving spouse has made the election to be treated as a deceased spouse, the election may not be revoked except with the consent of the secretary. Exactly how might one go about revoking it? We, have, we don't know. But either way, who cares? I mean, I have access to money. There are no RMDs until the deceased spouse would hit 75. If you die before the deceased spouse would hit 75, you can leave the money to your heirs. Uh, and receive it over their life expectancies. It's nuts. I didn't see any comments talking about this, the opportunity for the stretch IRA stuff. That's weird. I would have thought that would have been a big thing for people. So again, if you have a Roth and your spouse, younger spouse has a Roth, um, in 2024, you don't want to take that Roth into your name. You want to name yourself as a deceased spouse, elect to call yourself the deceased spouse. Uh, especially about kids. I, I guess it even applies to grandkids. It didn't say anything explicitly about it. I mean, it's just an eligible designated beneficiary, which is a human being. You don't Not a trust, but a human being. I, I mean, more to come, but whew, that, that's bringing back the stretch as far as I can see. A little bit convoluted, but, uh, and I'm sure they could adjust it accordingly, but as according to Jeff's reading of the law, it looks like it is so far. Anyway, love to your thoughts. Uh, keep uh, keep me apprised of other stuff you're coming up with. And if I made mistakes, put in the doobie dukes. If you see other ways to look at this, put in the doobie dukes. All right, we'll see you.